welcome back or welcome to Laurie's Little Studio. I'm Laurie and today we are going to be working on a baby bonnet. This is my piece of fabric. It has been washed with pink woolite. It has been starched and pressed and I don't know if you can tell but there is a little bit of a difference here. This fabric is not straight. This is the top layer here. And this is the bottom layer. So maybe now you can see where that isn't. So I need to straighten this piece of fabric. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm first going to cut these selvages off. I don't need these. And by the way, I ordered this fabric from Amazon. It is white petticoat batiste. It came from a warehouse in California and it had a massive footprint, an actual human footprint in this area and almost all of it came out but not all of it did. So what I plan to do is just cut this off and then cut this selvage off. I don't want to lose all of my width but I don't need, uh, it's a 58 to 60 inch wide piece of fabric. I need about a 44 inch length of fabric so I can cut this here and then trim off this selvage and then I can get to straightening this side over here. So what I plan to do is use my rotary cutter and my ruler and I will line up, this edge down here was perfectly straight by the way, both sides were exactly lined up. So in order to cut off this dirty part here, I'm going to line this up along a straight line right here and use my ruler on one of the other marks going vertically and my rotary cutter. I do want to make sure I'm going to stay straight and I'm going to press down pretty hard with my left hand because I don't want the ruler to move. I'm going to lean away from the ruler with my cutting blade. I mean I'm on it, you know, leaned up next to it, but I'm going to lean away like so. my hand. Okay. All right, let's do this other piece. I'm just going to cut off the selvage. I don't need to cut a big chunk like that off. All right, so the next thing I have to do is make sure that my fabric is completely straight and it's not. Bama hair all over everything today. He must be shedding. Tiny. Okay, so the next thing to do is make sure that everything is straight. And I think to keep it that way, I'm gonna pin it. All right, so here's that line. I don't know if you can see, maybe. You can kind of see it. That's where I need to cut. And make sure you use nice sharp fabric scissors and cut on the line that you can see from where you pulled that thread. Now that I have the fabric straight and ready to be rolled onto the dowel, 
that comes with your pleater right here. Some people replace this dowel with a longer, just a dowel from the hardware store. This one came with mine uh, and it is covered in a, um, it's like a suede, a fake suede fabric that helps my fabric attach, holds it on. You can, however, use a low tack tape. I, I don't know that I would use uh, gift wrap tape. I think if I were going to use tape, it would be maybe a washi rice tape. But you don't necessarily have to. If it just makes you feel like you have a little bit more control, by all means. We will be threading the needles on the pleater. I'm just going to use this heavy duty, uh, Coates heavy duty hand quilting, uh, or dual duty hand quilting thread. Okay, so I have chosen this uh, Monday's Child as my design. It's a Kathy Crisp design, and this was back in 1988. I don't know if Kathy Crisp Designs is still in business, but I still have the plate. So I'm going to use bits and pieces of all of this to create a geometric smocking design on this bonnet. So we'll attach the lace. I don't know why it's gathered up. I might have attempted to gather it one time in a different video. But I don't think I'm going to ruffle this lace on this particular project. I think I'm going to just leave it flat because it does have a pretty little scallop and I think that's enough. And I do have a package, I don't know if it's arrived yet, it could be in my mailbox, of some, I wanna say either quarter inch or eighth inch wide double face satin ribbon. And that will be what we use on the back of the bonnet. So this is what this bonnet will eventually end up looking like right here. I don't know why I said I was going to put the lace there. This is the front. Goodness. I'm trying to orient myself on these projects. Oh. So anyway, so you just thread this beautiful double face satin ribbon through the casing that you make on the back. All right, so let's see. I'm just going to pull this little satin ribbon out of the casing. And this is the whole back of the bonnet. And after you have pleated it, but before you have smocked it, you want to create your little casing. You won't be threading the ribbon through it until you've completely completed the smocking, but you need to go ahead and create this casing while you can lay the fabric flat. going to tie this in a double half knot like so pull that up as tight as you want to then tie a bow and make a double half knot using the two pieces of the bow like this and there we go there's that little bonnet shape. We'll reference this more. So to do the embroidery, I will be using this white Floche. Floche is just a DMC product that you can find on their website. Sometimes you can find it in craft and fabric stores. It will live 
in my box right here out of the dust okay so the next thing that I end up doing with this project is roll it and pleat it now I will tell you I have cleaned up my pleater it's it hasn't seen the light of day in probably 21 years I mean I've opened the box and I've looked at it but there's a possibility that these needles need some need to be replaced and if that's the case I pro it would probably take me too long to get replacement needles because this project needs to be sent out as soon as possible. Um, I am going to run some wax paper through the pleater just to see how they behave. If I can pick it up off the floor when I, when I grabbed it a little while ago, I came in the studio and just dropped it right on the floor. I'm just using regular old wax paper. Okay, now I'm not, I want to throw it on the floor again, so there we go. All right. Alrighty, so there it sits. I have to go fix dinner and then um, I'll come back probably in the morning is what I'm going to guess and we will tackle pleating. Good morning. We're here for day two of pleating and smocking up a baby bonnet and I have decided that I'm going to add another row of pleats to the fabric kind of basing it off of this made bonnet that I have. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it ends and begins with this one and this one and I feel like I need one more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with you guys. First things first, you need to tip your pleater up. The whole reason for that is it kind of helps keep these needles seated in the back part of the pleater. My pleater does not have that little pull out bar. My pleater has these two tabs. You'll see photos of these tabs right here. So I have to take a screwdriver. It's not that difficult, but I just, Loosen and loosen. You do not want to take these all the way out. There we go. Okay. And you just push these little tabs out like so. That will allow you to remove this roller bar. And the roller bar that removes from the pleater just lifts out like so and gives you access to where you're going to put the needles. And I'm going to be putting a needle in, oh, you don't want to roll them out, they'll just all fall out, right in there. You may have seen videos on YouTube or other sources that show you how to check for a bent needle. So that would be a good, a good video to check out. This is the portion that's threaded, and this is usually called the swan neck right in here. You want to check that to make sure that it hasn't been bent. I checked my needles yesterday. This one right here is not a good needle. If you cannot get it to line up, There's enough space between the needle that I first put down and the second needle that I know the second needle is 
So I'm going to just, I hang on to them because I don't want to uh, throw them out and have someone get hurt. But I can tell kind of at a glance if a needle is bent. And it's not something I'm going to be dealing with on a regular basis. So you hold your needle with the eye of the needle toward you like so. Here's, here's the eye back, back here. I'm going to use my right hand so I don't accidentally hit these over here on the left. And you just settle it down into this spot right here. And then, and you can do that all the way across. You can do it just in this first little bit where the needles are close together and then kind of get farther apart. I want to be very careful. I know that I will be, um, I'll have extra fabric out here, but I don't want needles to go through it because they'll leave holes. Then you just put your roller bar back into the slot. No, there. there it is. Then you push these little tab, tabs back over into place and gently tighten it down. It doesn't have to be cranked down real tight. Just roll it to make sure I got it in there. And that just gives me one extra row. And I'm just kind of basing it off of this. So if that's the bottom row, that's the top row. Okay. I need to cut some thread. And I'm probably going to go about a yard, maybe a little bit longer. Now I'm going to thread mine from left to right. It's easier for you to come up from under the eye of the needle to thread, then by all means you can do that. I like to just kind of push mine to the back once I've got them threaded. All right, it's time to roll the fabric onto the dowel. I am going to roll, let's get this sorted out here, so that at least the amount of fabric that I plan to pleat is on the dowel. There should be some off over here on the side. So I can slide this. I'm kind of using this as my guide. So it's about here. So I can slide this a little further this way. And we're just going to go ahead and roll. And we just need to watch this edge, try to keep everything straight. If our fabric has been straightened, we should be good. You may have to start and stop a couple times. And I will recommend using more space than I happen to have. So if you have like a, a nice large area where you can work, see this is too, this is too loose. I need to keep it tight. I do suggest that you pre-wash your fabric and press it. You don't have to press with starch, but once you've washed it, the sizing that it came with is gone. If you want a little bit of body in your fabric, you can go ahead and add just a bit of starch if you need to. Now we're coming up to the end. I'm trying to see if I'm going to have a straight, yeah, it's pretty straight. And then I just roll it and that will help to tighten it up. 
All right. The other thing I need to do is pull the pleating threads to the front, like so. There we go. And I think I'm going to use my little box for support over here. If you have a stack of books, you can use those. Okay. All right. I'm going to Now you can cut you can approach this with your fabric rolling off this way or this way, which is what I'm doing. I want to get this lined up and I want a little extra fabric up here so I'm going to find a spot on my pleater like probably about here well maybe here some people will put a glass head pin in uh, like here I'm not fond of this method and I won't use it but you can slide a pin in there and find the sweet spot. Oh, there we go, like so. And then that will help you keep an eye on that spot, but I'm not comfortable doing that, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to watch it with my eyes right here so it's two grooves up from my last needle right here and that's where I want to start and I'm going to get the fabric in there like so and you're always going to roll or pull push the handle toward the back. And remember just go slow and push this to the back. Keep an eye on this edge over here. And I don't want my needles to fill up Okay, now it's time to remove it from the needles. piece of pleated fabric. Now there's a couple things we have to do. So I know that I'm going to need to remove some of these stitches over here because I want to finish this and I'm going to do that on the, on the other side as well. And I'm just going to use a pin. I'm actually going to go from the back one, two, three, so that my threads are on the back. I don't want them on the front. Yes, we have enough. I'm just going to do a roll and whip and then I'm going to fold that under and stitch it down a little bit. But now I need to sort of control the length of these. So I'll probably cut them about here. Oh, you have no idea what I'm doing, do you? <laughs> okay. 
So I pulled out some of the smocking on this edge right here so that I can finish this edge and of course the other edge. Now I'm going to cut these threads. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We'll cut them 12 inches long, which is just, you know, removing excess that I don't need. We need to get ready to smock. Yeah, I think I'm gonna grab some other smocking plates that I have and just take a peek and see what I see. So I will be right back. All right, so I grabbed up a couple things that I think I might be willing to limit myself to. But let's start with this. This has got, it's a magazine that I don't even know if it's still in publication, it might be. But nobody ever throws these away because they're awesome. They have patterns in them. They have smocking plates in them. I mean, look, this is amazing. It's very pretty. Look at that right there. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, I'm gonna turn the light off so it's not glaring on the page. So of course none of these needles that I had on my needle keep are chenille. That's the nice needle I like to use when I'm smocking. It has a nice long eye and it is sharp. But one thing to keep in mind, make sure you have some hydrogen peroxide, if you are like me, around if you're smocking on white because if you stab yourself with a needle or a pen, You've got white fabric. I don't even need to say anymore. All right, so my journey has concluded. This is one of the smock -a stitch starter kits that I used to sell in my shop. And lo and behold, it does have a needle. It comes with pleated fabric smocking needle and embroidery thread. This needle is too short for me. I've never liked these needles. I think it's probably a good idea to learn how to smock using one but I don't care for that. It's just, I like long needles. So, I remembered that I had this old ancient quilting needle box that is discolored and ancient. And this piece right here is a magnet and it's all curled up and these needles are, I don't know, 100 years old, but they've been in here. And this is my needle of choice right here. The eye is long and open but the same size as the needle. And I can get this through and the eye goes right through behind it. So here's my plan. This foxy pin cushion is actually filled with graphite and I'm going to use it to clean this needle just it's like the little strawberry that's attached to the tomato pin cushion. And I'm gonna stick the eye in there as well. Careful not to stab myself if possible. 
Okay. It has definitely gone from being kind of a weird color to a nice shiny color. So that makes me happy. Okay, and I'm going to use my needle keep in here just to kind of keep it contained. And I will only be smocking with one strand of floche. So there it is right there. You probably knew that I was going to do this before I knew I was going to do this, but I'm not going to do this in white. I think for a brand new baby, that's pretty cute. I'm back from my phone call and I've just been itching to get started on my smock in here. So let's go ahead and get started right. Now you can iron your floss if you want to. I recommend for sure that you do this. Just run it underneath your hot iron. If you're going to be doing stitches like a bullion rose or a type of any kind of raised embroidery on these pleats. I highly recommend that you press your floss. So I have a length of floss here that is 16 inches. I usually go about 18 inches with my floss, but 16 it is. So, okay, and I am gonna thread my needle with my old technique, which is to fold it and push the needle over the folded edge. And there we go. And the way that I kind of tie off is I'm gonna come up through the back of the smocking. I am going to start over here on the left and I'm going to go into a pleat. Now for me, I'm going to start up at the top, like this. The first one is always the most squirrely for me, but there we go. Okay, no, still not quite on the top of that. It's in a valley, not in a pleat. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna pull through, but I'm gonna watch to see the end, and then I'm going to hold that with my finger back here. And I'm gonna go right back in. It's just me doing my little thing with my knot. Okay. And now I will Grab on the back, I'm going to grab the next pleat and loop around my needle. And pull that tight. Like so. I'm pulling on both and now I'm going to cut this off this tail. Now I would just say for your own sake, do the knot the way that you are most comfortable doing a knot. You can seriously make a knot in your floss and hide it in a pleat. You can, I mean, or in a valley, right down inside between two pleats, you can stick a knot and it won't show unless it is of a deep color. If your floss is a dark, dark color and your fabric is a light, light color, it'll show. All right. Now, where's my needle? There it is. Okay, now I'm going to come up in a valley 
I'm going to just start up here at the very top where the first blue thread is. Okay. And I'm going to... I have to get this in my head. I know it, but there's always that when you haven't smocked in a while, it's like, is it needle thread up or thread down? Okay, now we're kind of winding our floss to the right. I forgot my glasses, let's see. Isn't that frustrating? Okay, here we go, perfect. So there's that first one. I'm going to hold my floss up because I'm working my way down. So I'm gonna do a half wave, I believe is what that's called, a half step wave right there. I'm going to move my floss up and I'm going to go in again, right where that blue thread is, right there. Okay, so I have done this stitch and this stitch. All right, I'm gonna leave my floss in the down position and I'm gonna go over to the next pleat. It's always moving one pleat over to the right every time you take a step in geometric smocking. All right, so there's that. I think I need to pull the camera down a little bit more. All right, and you'll get to see that again if you missed it. But now this time, I'm going to hold the floss down here. I'm going to move over to the very next pleat, halfway up, like so. I'm going to hold my floss down. I'm going to go to the very next pleat, which would be the next blue line at the very top. So I'm just following the blue lines like so. So I have down, down, across, up, up, and now I need to do across. So I'm going to go right into the next pleat, like so. And then I'm going to reverse and I'm going to have my floss up because I'm moving down. So, and my floss will go up because I'm moving down. I'm going to move over to the next pleat, like so. I'm going to leave it where it is, and I'm going to make one cable stitch right next door, like that. And there's those stitches, like so. Now that I'm going up, my floss will be down. I'm just going to go halfway between the first blue thread and the second blue thread. All right, I need to bring my floss back down because I am stitching up. And I'm going to just go across like that. All right, I'm going to talk you through one more, and then I'm going to finish all the way across, and we're going to add a second color. All right, so we're at the top right here. That's our last stitch right there. Now because I am stitching down, I'm doing a stitch and then another stitch moving down, my floss has to be up, like so.
I've just decided I'm ta I literally this day will go down in in my history book as being one of the weirdest days I've ever had. I'm not lying. I have so much weird stuff. I could not make up my mind about what pleating design or, or plate to use. And I just decided I'm going to do my own. I've taken some elements from this one. I have taken some elements from this one. And I'm going to combine them. And that's the beautiful thing about geometric smocking. You can do that all day long if you want to. So, I'm going to do that. Now, the first thing I need to decide is this is going to be smocked. And I need to do the... Yeah, I can't. I can't release these pleats. See, this is the kind of thing that's been happening to me. I want to go ahead and put the lace on here, but I can't do it until this is completely smocked and I can pull out these holding threads. When those have been, when this has been smocked and these have been pulled out, then I will be able to add the French lace to the front part of the bonnet. The issue for me is, is that I'm just so excited to get this done that um, my and my head just keeps thinking of all these ideas and I don't know, I don't need to be thinking of all these ideas. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. All right, I will be back tomorrow morning. Hopefully, have this smocked and we'll pick up with the next color and I'll see you then. All right, guys, I'm back. I think this is day three of. Our little project here and as I said I would do I have smocked that first bit of smocking in the pink it's really cute I did want to turn on some more lights I don't know if it'll help or not but there we go but I also wanted to show you a sample real quick before I get busy with the minty I don't know. I, I tend to call this kind of a baby green. I'm not real sure what the color name is because as I said, it's on that non-identifiable little tag. I don't know who makes it. But I wanted to show you an example of a combo of picture smocking and geometric smocking. So if you're interested, this is one of the things that you can do right here. This is one of the dresses that my mom made. So now I'm going to be trying to half the inside between the smocking I've already done. So if you're new to smocking, the basic rules are, well, the first rule is have fun, enjoy it.
is what we have so far. So it will be the pink, the green, and then I'm going to take the white and just do straight cables right there to kind of hold this. You do want something to kind of give this some structure and that will hold it. It'll be kind of in the middle. Okay guys, I'm back. I have finished the green. And you know, this morning I was thinking that instead of doing what I was talking about yesterday, which was to do a row of white with the flo uh, with the floche, I kind of think what I want to do is take one strand of the green, one strand of the floche, and one strand of the pink to create a blended color to do this or something similar to this. It's a cable stitch. They're, they're not stacked cables. They're just one after the other along the row of pleats. And the, the white will just kind of help it stand up pretty. And then there's the green. I just I love blended flosses. Purples and blues are just so nice. All right, so I will continue in this vein. I just wanted to show you, I, I did get the ribbon for the back part of the bonnet. So I went for luxury, double face satin. Oh yeah, it's lovely. And this is the perfect width for uh, the back casing and it will tie up pretty into a nice bow. And I suppose I could go with a color, but I'm not, I just, nah, I wanted to stick with the white. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right guys, I will see you when this is done. Hey guys, welcome to Monday. I didn't do too much of this on, on the weekend because I finally had a weekend to do some gardening, which will explain my hands. I didn't want to touch this after I'd been out working in the yard. So after repeated scrubbings of my hands and my fingers and trying to get the the garden dirt out, I uh, and I do wear gloves. I just don't wear them all the time. Uh, anyway, my hands are fine now. So it is, and I finished this, I think it was like from here to here this morning. So now I'm going to be working on the big open area that will allow this to kind of flare out. I suddenly realized a little while ago, about an hour ago, that it's the 24th of April. And <laughs> this was supposed to be there by the end of the month. I don't think it's going to make it. So it'll just be a little late. I kind of want to maintain this distance here. So I feel like it will it would be half. So I'm going to go from this blue line here. Well, actually no, not half. It is one full row. So I will start on this is it going to show right there? I think you can see. I got a needle in my mouth. Excuse me. There we go. Right there. There's some blue thread showing, and that's what's holding the pleats. So that's where I'm going to be starting on this particular row. And I will be, this will be it. 
All right, so the way I'm going to start this is I will have my floss up to the top. Make a cable stitch right here. Then I'm going to hold my floss up to the top like I always do. And I'm going to do one down, hold my floss up, I'll cut that in half distance from the other one, floss up, and then I'm down to the next blue thread. I think four would be too many. So when I get down to this next row of blue thread, I will do a cable. And then I'm going to hold my floss down and I'm going to cable up three or wave up three. And I'm going to use, I wish I could get this to focus better. I'm, I'm going to uh, try to turn this light on that might, that might help opposing light. We'll see. Okay, so I have gone cable, wave down, wave down, wave down, cable, and I've gone wave up one. Now I'm going to hold my floss down and go over to the next pleat. And I'm just cutting the distance between the blue threads into thirds. Now I'll do another straight cable across. So as you can see, as I go through this process, which shouldn't take too long, this area, I've got to make sure that I'm completely in the same area right here I'm going to take my needle and I can see I'm in the right place but anyway it shouldn't take too long to get all the way across because these stitches go fairly fast they're wide on the back of this little bonnet so that the baby's head has room to fit in there Okay, so can you see kind of how it's, how it's going? And then once these threads are removed, it'll open up nice and wide like this and fit pretty on the baby's head. And then we're going to take the threads out and attach our lace to the front of the bonnet. I'll have to make the side hem and then the back of the bonnet the back part will have the casing for the eighth inch wide ribbon to fit through. That creates the little opening in the back of the bonnet. So, so we, oh, there's a silk thread on there. So we have to attach our lace like we've got here, create the side seams. Oh, we also have to attach our side satin ribbon pieces, which I have right here, and then tie the bow in the back, pack it up in a, in a box, and send it off. All right, I'm going to get this done, and then we'll start the sewing part. I'll see you back here. Very next day, and the smocking is all completed. So the next step is to do whatever type of stitch you want to do across the top. If you wanted to, you could do this by hand. If you wanted to do this on the sewing machine like me, then you could do that. And if you wanted to, I think on this back piece, you could actually, yeah, you could easily run this through a serger if you wanted to.
Okay, so this is the smocking with the pleats released. so that the stitches will go fabric lace, fabric lace. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is some um, of those who stitch this type of sewing um, have like they'll do this by hand they'll attach the lace to the fabric with a whip stitch by hand some like me will use a zigzag stitch what I'm doing is I'm just feeding the fabric and the lace together like so When this is gathered up, this will be the frilly front part of our little bonnet, which I think is so cute. All right, I'll be back in a minute. We're back. We've all been pressed. And so now I am going to, I wanna leave this right here open on both sides across the bottom. It's kind of like doing a window where you have to leave a casing for the curtain rod to go through. So the first thing I need to do is stitch these short sides. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. time to take that bodkin and if you do not have a bodkin you can always use a safety pin for the same purpose All right, let me go get the the ribbon I'm not going to cut this until I think I like the length and then I'll, I'll cut it. So I've just threaded my bodkin with some ribbon and here we go. Now because I didn't cut it off the spool, 
I don't have to worry about it being too short or too long because I can adjust this as needed. We want this to be fairly even, obviously, in the back. And I'll just snip that there. And because we're using a really thin ribbon, I recommend doing a double half knot. It'll stay like so. All right, and then you tie a bow, and then tie the bow in a half knot. There we go. Wow. All right. Okay, so I've got to find the ribbon. Let me do that real quick, and then we'll be all finished. guys I'm back there is still a little bit of work to be done on this bonnet I've got a piece of wool batting in here uh, to kind of give it some shape but before I finish this video I wanted to show you my method for attaching these little ties that go under the chin I'm going to put that behind just behind the smocking so although I am doing some back smocking which will end on this bottom row right here so I'm probably going to put it here is my phone buzzing yes hello okay then I'm going to put this here just, just like that. In fact, I'm going to use a very thin glass head pen to hold it in place, like so. And I'm going to take my floss that I used to do this. and remove my nice milliner needle. And I think I'll just use the three strands of pink right here that I have. Okay. And you have a, a, just a multitude of options. You can do just a sweet little embroidered flower using um, whatever embroidery stitches you have used or are familiar with, the ones that you like to make. Um, or you can get real fancy. You can even do silk ribbon if you want to. A little bit of silk ribbon embroidery really lifts a project. Uh, but I'm going to do a bullion rose. So I will be doing that to the other side as well. Uh, but I'm going to continue to back smock along these ed this edge back here to give this a little bit more body than what we're looking at. I just feel like that's quite necessary for, I don't know, it just seems like it needs it for structure. So that's what I'll be doing.
Okay guys, so I'm squaring up a piece of pink Barissima fabric and I'm going to make a little, little tiny bonnet to send along with the toddler sized bonnet that I originally made. The baby shower has already occurred so this is just going to be one of those little surprise gifts from a distant relative that I know she'll love. Of course I have to thread the needles and that's another thing you can thread your needles from this side. So I'm going to use this nice Guterman thread Let's go ahead and put the lace on it because it's not going to run through the pleater. If you have any loose threads, just go ahead and get rid of them. And just cut your lace. All right, so this is the front of the bonnet. Kind of helps to know. And uh, there's some pearl beads. Put them in there. Okay. Let me get this where you guys can see. All right. And remember, this edge with the lace will be over here. Oh, maybe about right there. So, now I'm looking at, sorry, my neighbor just started up his great big truck. I'm looking at these lines over here for the amount that I want up here. I'm thinking I'm going to go about there, which to me looks like about an inch and a half. Okay. And remember, we're going to crank this this way, just as if it were turned around, it would be going the opposite direction. And I want that lined up in that groove, kind of like so, and it'll just grab right away. Okay. I'm going to keep this. You notice I'm not rolling it on the dowel this time. I'm going to kind of help it with the tension with my hand. I'm not holding it because I don't want to cause any, you know, pressure that will make it go crazy. I'm looking at this line right here and watching this over here. And if I need to adjust it, then I just slowly adjust. There we go. Now the way I like to do this is you can just keep pulling your fabric off as you go. Unfortunately it does tend to distort your needles. I don't have that uh, wooden box in here so I have all my tools but I do have 
a skewer and I can just split the thread right here. And then you just pull and there's one done. And now I'm going to evenly distribute the threads so I don't have any that are too short or too long on either side. And I think before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and grab a sewing needle and get this um, stitched through these holes if I can find anything. My goodness. Need a little needle. Not so. Here we go. It doesn't even have to be a smocking needle. So if this happens to you, I do recommend that you just go on and, and try to do this because it'll make your life a lot less stressy. And I have to come up with some floss that I think would be really pretty. Now you did see that Madeira, I think, that I found in my heirloom box. Let's take a look at that again. Here it is. Is it too close? Well, no, it's actually a shade darker. That might be really pretty. Let's just see what we think of that. I'll be right back with my smocking needle. extremely satisfying. You're like, dang it, I'm at the end. I know. See, it's not that hard. No. The only thing you didn't have was thread. So if it has thread in it, then it just holds it. Yep. When you pull it off, it stays. You have to pull gently until you get all the threads. Oh my gosh, look at this piece of fabric. I know, isn't that wild? <laughs> it's like an accordion. You're actually doing extremely well. <laughs> you can take the dowel out now if you want to. There you go. That's the best way to pull that off of me. Wow. Now you have two like pleated pieces of fabric. <laughs> I don't know what you want to do with them. <laughs> I don't know, but they're cool. There we go. Oh, that's cool. That is super, super satisfying. <laughs> How cool is that? We have finished the casing, so I need to find my little small safety pin and we'll get some 
silk ribbon or this satin ribbon I mean I don't think we're gonna need the whole big long piece all right I can't find the little safety pin so I'm just gonna use my really big huge needle it doesn't have a sharp point and the way I do it is I will thread it just like you would if you were sewing <laughs> if your eyes will allow it okay now I'm gonna pull this so that it's like most of the way through and I'm going to back my needle through the casing so I first to do our little under the chin. All right, I'm going to cut these 18. If you cut your ribbon like this, in theory, you should not have to do this, but I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm going to hold it so that they're close but not touching. And you'll feel that little beaded edge. So close. If, you, if they're touching, sometimes they will attach themselves to each other, but if you do it like that, Run it down the side, check for the beading, got it. And then hold it up and see if it looks like they're in the same place. I think they are exactly dead on. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to try seven on a French knot. And remember, you have to put pressure and tension on this, which can feel awkward until you kind of figure out how you're doing it. just gonna have to use the green cotton because it's the only color I can find that will work with what I already have and I mean I'm not mad about it it's fine just fine now I do have to split this though 
because it's cotton and it won't go through that needle like the silk did. So we'll go with um, two. This bonnet side tie, I'm thinking maybe turn this light off. Yeah. That might show up a little bit better. I'm going to do this on this side. Well, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know if this is... I just think it's the most precious little thing. See, here's the back. That would be the back of the baby's head. That's kind of up on the top part of the baby. Not the top, but the top back of the baby's head. And then this will just give as much as needed, and this will provide that bonnet face shade that you want for a little baby. Kind of does like that. And there she is. Here's our little tie on this side, and our little tie on this side. And there we go. All right, so I will get this off in the mail for our little baby. I need to press these ties now that I've tied them. We don't want them to go off into the world. And this one I'm just going to work on in the day that I finish and get it ready to go in the mail. And remember this was the tie for this side. I haven't done this tie yet because I am doing a whole bunch of back smocking to give this one a little bit more structure. I don't know if I showed you guys that I went ahead and pulled a new um, pleating thread in here. I did this by hand going into the pleats on this side. Did I tie it over here? Yeah, it's tied. So it's kind of helping me keep things together. I'm just going to continue on with this back smocking. I'm using white floche um, just to kind of keep this one a little bit less loosey-goosey. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this how to pleat using a pleater, how to smock, how to kind of make up your own little geometric smocking design if you want to. These two both were just straight out of my own head, just using stitches that I know and how to attach the side ties with embroidery rather than just sewing. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Bye!